she belongs here. She belongs to the Sailor Sea. Not to Miami, not to the owners of that sea aquarium. And she was stolen from the Sailor Sea. She was stolen from her mother. She was stolen from the, her place of belonging. She was stolen from the place where the creator placed her. This is the Salish Sea in the Pacific Northwest, a region of North America renowned for its unspoiled beauty, pristine waters, and spectacular inhabitants. But here, in 1970, an event occurred that is unthinkable by today's standards. Over 40 orca children were captured during a period of several weeks, sold off like slaves, then transported to marine parks all over the world. This is Tokitai, the sole survivor of those captured whales. She has been living in this concrete tank for 47 years. The most notorious of the roundups of uh, captures of orcas for marine parks that began in 1965 ended in 1976. So the peak of it uh, was 1970 and 71. And, and every single person and the residents along the sides of Penn Cove will tell us to this day that what they remember most are the piercing, agonized calls from all the family. They devastated the pods. They took whale after whale after whale, and lots of them died. This is a sickening business, a sickening business, and it's got to be stopped. Yeah. And now to confine that animal to a 50 or 60 foot pen is inhumane. Um, I don't know if inhumane is the right word, but it's, it's grossly wrong. The other problems, of course, are the, the very substandard conditions in Miami. Um, they don't even meet the, the very basic requirements for the size and the conditions of the, of the pool that Tokitai is, is kept in. She's out in the sun in Florida a lot. This is totally unnatural. One of the orca activists went to the seaquarium in Miami with a little recording of her pod and of, of them talking to one another. He got down close enough to the water's edge, he played it, and she recognized it, and she visibly reacted. She, she listened, and then she started shaking and calling. So she definitely recognized the cries of her mother and her aunt and her relatives there, and it was apparently a very emotional experience for him to realize that this orca misses her family. She, she knows them and she wants to be back with them. She calls out in the night. And the recordings that we have of those calls have been analyzed and they are L-pod calls of the Southern residents. Is, that's how we know that she is a member of L-pod. And she still is calling out. That tells us that she has vivid memories and, and that she, is, she may not know she's 3,000 miles away. The last she saw, she was at the Seattle waterfront and then, you know, put into a box. And she may not know, you know, the distance and she may think maybe her family is out there. She's, she's near the ocean, so she may hear the waves and think, well, her family may come by some day, some time. And if she calls, maybe they'll come. Lummi Nation has shared the Salish Sea with orca whales for more than 10,000 years. The Lummies consider orcas members of their tribe and are committed to bringing Tokitai home to swim with her original pod and her mother. The aim is to bring her home in order to achieve that larger aim of the Salish Sea because it is the highway of a life way for native peoples and not just native peoples all the people of the Sailor Sea Biology. Creator willing, you know, 
together we can make this happen for her and, and for her pod and her mother and uh, for our people, the people in the Salish Sea. This is Glenwood Springs Salmon Hatchery on Orcas Island in the Salish Sea. A 100-acre cove is being prepared for the day when Tokitai returns to her home waters. She will be gradually reintroduced into her native environment, receiving veterinary care from handlers she knows and trusts. The hatchery will provide her plenty of Chinook salmon as she learns to catch her own. And the site is strategically located. Her native Elpod swims past the cove often in their normal jaunts around the islands. Will she hear her mother's calls? Only time will tell. The big challenge to all of us, not just the Lummies, is whether or not the Salish Sea is going to be a dead ocean or remain one of those biodiverse estuaries in North America. We're at decision time. We've been called to bring her home. Will you work with us? We have a plan. We have a place. We have a strategy. We're raising money. Tribes don't go away. It's not like uh, an organization. It's a government. And we're going to do 16 events down the West Coast and across the Gulf Coast honoring Tokatai's return and restoring and protecting the Salish Sea and the Gulf Coast. So we're going to tie these together. We're bringing it all home to Miami. Join us at that event. All those people I just mentioned will be invited to participate and the public. And the totem pole will be there with presenters and it's either going to be a big party or it's going to be a big protest. So this totem pole journey is about freedom for Tokake, bringing her home. Efforts to discuss the release of Tokitai with Sequarium have so far resulted in no meaningful dialogue. So for now, Tokitai continues to perform in two shows per day, entertaining tourists, doing tricks for food. She's called out to us. We're calling out to you. And we're addressing that to Sequarium as much as anything. Do the right thing. And she talks uh, to the spirits at night, and she cries for her mother. She does. And she wants to come home now. Yeah. But she's really tough to survive all of what happened to all of those other ones that were taken at the same time. You know, all the other ones are all gone now. There's just her. With her homecoming, it's going to be a beautiful, a beautiful gathering with her family, her loved ones, her brothers and sisters, her cousins, and her, probably her aunties and uncles and relatives. You know, they'll know, they'll know and she'll know what home is because she, she still remembers. She still remembers.